have a, uh, I have an address by a, uh, a, a student coming up. And I know it's a, uh, this, this program has been a long one, as, as the last several years have been a long one. Long and frustrating at times, some have said that it's enough to make you pull your hair out. Uh, and with that, with that I, I hope uh, Matthew's in good spirits tonight. I hope, uh, I look very much uh, forward to shaking his hand. And, uh, uh, All uh, nice stage. But without, without further ado and, uh, and, and cheap shots, I will, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Matthew uh, Cooper. Good evening. Uh, before I begin, I would like to give special thanks to my beautiful wife, Emily, uh, my mom and dad, Tom and Judy Cooper, who could not make it tonight because of the snow, and uh, to my deary, very dear friends, Charlie and Marion, uh, who have taught me more about what it means to be a good nurse and a better person than I could have learned in any classroom. Uh, uh, my name is Matthew Cooper, and I am a Montgomery College graduate nurse. I'd like to welcome you to the Performing Arts Center and the 2009 Pinning Ceremony. Uh, formerly known as the Capping Ceremony, the Pinning Ceremony is an important part of nursing tradition. In the old days, graduate nurses would come to a ceremony much like this and have the traditional white nursing cap placed on their heads. Uh, this symbolic act represents our transition from student into the world of professional nursing. Um, after our pinning, our professors become our colleagues, and the challenges that we have faced as students are replaced by the challenges that we will face as registered nurses. As you've already seen, we've recently changed this tradition to one where a pin is placed on the garment that the graduate nurse is wearing, in this case, a white robe. You may be asking yourself, why the change from the cap to the pin? Well, the simple answer to that question is that the ceremony has been changed to reflect the changing face of nursing. Today, more men are becoming nurses, and as a result, the uniform of the nurse is changing with the times as well. Indeed, there are few professions as strongly associated with the female gender as nursing, and of the nearly three million registered nurses in the United States, only about 3% are men. Uh, as men begin to play an increasingly important role in alleviating the dire nursing shortage currently facing this nation, our ideas about who a nurse is or what a nurse looks like are changing as well. As far as the pinning ceremony itself is concerned, I think I speak for male nurses everywhere when I say that. As cute as we may have looked in a floor length white cape, skirt, and hat, uh, we're glad that the cap has gone way to the pin. Um, I hope that you've had a chance to visit our campus and see the place where we've been hiding your loved ones for the last two years. Uh, the Montgomery College Nursing Program is an intense academic program, and I'd like to share with you some of the things we've learned as students at MC. Uh, we learned that despite having an in-depth and comprehensive knowledge of the science of nutrition and its effects on human physiology, Kentucky Fried Chicken still tastes delicious. <laughs> we also learned that even as even if a nursing student cannot correctly pronounce the term vastus lateralis, that will in no way discourage them from stabbing it with a 22 gauge needle and injecting it full of drugs. More importantly, we learned that with hard work, academic diligence, and the support of our loved ones, anything is possible. Most important of all, we learned what it means to be a nurse. Sure, we learned a lot of different technical skills in nursing school, but those skills are merely a means to an end. The role of the nurse is in many ways a sacred one. Nurses are nurturers and healers, and nurses are consistently ranked as the most trusted profession in the United States. In our healthcare system, oftentimes it is the nurse who spends the most time communicating with the patient at the bedside and with their families. We get to know our patients, and we get to know their families. And oftentimes it is this intimate personal knowledge that leads us to find problems which are unidentified and how best to correct those problems. Um, we are routinely invited into the circle of trust that is normally reserved only for members of the family, and you can rest assured that when you place your trust in a nurse, it is in good hands indeed. It is our responsibility as nurses to care for people in their times of greatest need and also to advocate on their behalf. Every one of the graduate nurses you've seen walk across this stage tonight is absolutely dedicated to caring for people 
and they've all worked very hard to earn the privilege to do so. For nurses, caring for patients doesn't just mean the interventions that we perform on their behalf. It means offering yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually when someone needs it. It also means being a patient advocate, and in this regard, being a nurse means being able to speak truth to power. Our most sacred responsibility is to protect our patients' interests, no matter what hospital policy dictates, what the physician orders, or what the prevailing opinion is in Washington at the time. Nurses have a long and storied tradition of standing up for our patients, our communities, and for the disenfranchised. And it is not only our responsibility, but our moral imperative to do so. That is the role of the nurse, and it is one that we are honored to fulfill. To the friends and family that have joined us here tonight, I would like to say that although you may not think, although you may think that you are here to celebrate us, we are actually here to celebrate you. And although tonight may be the first time that you have ever heard of some of us, it is not the first time we have heard all about you. <laughs> we have all shared stories with each other about the wonderful people that we are proud to call family and all the amazing things that you have done to allow us to walk across this stage tonight. We are all so very glad that you could join us to share in our achievement. I speak on behalf of the entire class of graduating nurses when I say that we would like to sincerely thank you for all the sacrifices that you've made along the way which have allowed us to succeed at our endeavor. We couldn't have done it without your support. Thank you. We would also like to thank the faculty of the Montgomery College Nursing Program for empowering us with the gift of education, teaching us the skill of critical thinking, and instilling in us a lifelong love of learning. There were surely many sleepless nights spent creating patient care plans, concept maps, and cramming for difficult exams when the last thing on our mind was thanking you at this moment. <laughs> Yet here we are, graduate nurses, well prepared to enter the world of professional nursing. The author G.K. Chesterton once said, education is simply the soul of a society as it passes from one generation to the next. And so, as we leave this auditorium and go forth into the world to begin our nursing practice, it is your passion for nursing that we will carry across this nation, across this globe, and into the lives of patients whom you will never meet. And you will be there with us as we save lives, comfort the sick, and make the world a better place, one patient at a time. Because there is no way that we could ever repay you for this gift that you have given us, we will instead repay the federal government and private lenders for many many years to come. <laughs> From the bottom of our collective heart, thank you. Finally, to the fall 2009 Montgomery College nursing graduates, I'd like to remind you of an experience that we shared that you may have forgotten. On the first day of Nursing 110 lecture, one of our professors said to us, take a look around. You may see some faces you know, and you may not. But I can assure you, by the, by the end of this program, you'll all be one big family, and you will know each other better than you can ever imagine. I don't know about you, but for me, a 25-year-old native Alabamian and recent transfer, from the stu uh, transfer student from the University of the District of Columbia, I looked around that room, and I thought to myself, nah, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> I couldn't have been more incorrect. We have shared so many things together. We have shared tense moments pacing in ancient, ancient hallways awaiting the results of difficult exams. We have shared the joy of tackling difficult challenges and being successful. M most importantly, we have shared one another's defeats and we have applied that same spirit of caring that is such an integral part of nursing to each other. It has truly been the experience of a lifetime to get to know you and to walk this path together. Our time together as students is coming to a close, but this is not the end. Rather, it is the end of the beginning. Each one of you is a brilliant, beautiful person, passionate about making the world a better place. I hope that as we begin our professional lives, those same fires of idealism that you carry with you now will burn as brightly as ever, lighting the way into the future. And just as we are the inheritors of this rich tradition of nursing, it is now up to each one of us to ensure that this tradition continues into the future. I hope that you will continue to grow and learn as nurses. 
I hope that you will continue to struggle to advance those causes which are so very near your hearts. I hope that you will take advantage of your right as healthcare professionals to organize in the workplace, to demand safe staff to patient ratios, safe working environments, and fair compensation for the invaluable work that you perform. And so, as we go our separate ways to follow the roads which are set before us, you may be wondering, what do we do now? I would like to offer a suggestion from the great American poet, Walt Whitman, who said, this is what you shall do. Love the earth and sun and the animals, despise riches, give alms to everyone that asks, stand up for the stupid and crazy, devote your income and labor to others, hate tyrants, argue not concerning God, have patience and indulgence toward the people, take off your hat to nothing known or unknown, or to any man or number of men, go freely with powerful uneducated persons, and with the young, and with the mothers of families. Re-examine all that you have been told in school, or church, or in any book. Dismiss whatever insults your own soul, and your very flesh shall be a great poem, and have the richest fluency, not only in its words, but in the silent lines of its lips and face, and between the lashes of your eyes, and in every motion and joint of your body. Thank you. time I would like to pass the lantern on to Helen Sun, who represents the 2010 spring semester nursing class of Montgomery College. The spring 2010 class are the next group of Montgomery College students who will walk away from this campus and join my class in the practice of professional nursing. We, the class of 2009, wish you much luck and success as you begin the last stage of your journey. This passing of the torch is a reminder that the profession of nursing is a profession that believes in the continuity of care and is vital to the welfare of those that we care for. If any of us can give the evening, get the evening off, we hope to see you standing here passing on the light of wisdom to those students who will follow in your footsteps. Again, good luck as you enter Nursing 233 and 234. You're going to need it. <laughs>